Hello everybody, this video is on forces on an inclined surface with friction. As we discussed in a previous video on forces on an inclined surface without friction, we said that the weight force acts downward and the normal force acts perpendicularly away from the surface. In this scenario, the normal force does not equal to the weight force. Now, when we have an object on a surface with friction, the friction always acts up the slope. There are two types of friction. Static friction, when the object is at rest and not moving, and kinetic friction, when the object is moving downward. When the object is at rest, in other words, at a static equilibrium, the static friction acts up the slope and balances the downward component of weight force, that is mg sine theta. Remember that this angle theta here is the same as the angle of the inclined surface. The normal force vector balances with mg cosine theta. When you're looking at all the force vectors in the two directions, that is going up or down the slope and away or towards the surface, all the force vectors should be balanced. So that means the normal force minus mg cosine theta gives you a net force of zero and mg sine theta minus the static friction it also gives you a net force of zero. This is so that the overall net force is zero, which allows the mass to be in a static equilibrium and therefore remain at rest. What about when the mass is moving? Well, this is very similar, but instead of static friction, we have kinetic friction acting up the slope. This is so that the kinetic friction balances with the downward weight force component, which is mg sine theta, and the normal force balances with mg cosine theta again. Mathematically, this can be expressed as normal force minus mg cosine theta, again giving you a net force of zero, and mg sine theta minus the kinetic friction, again giving you a net force of zero. So similar to the previous scenario, the net forces in both directions is again zero, which gives you a dynamic equilibrium, meaning that the mass is able to move at a constant velocity down the slope. Now, sometimes when the mass is moving, the component of weight force acting down the slope, that is mg sine theta, can be actually greater than the kinetic friction provided by the inclined surface. When this occurs, the net force acting down the slope is no longer zero. That is mg sine theta minus the kinetic friction gives a net force that's greater than zero. When the net force is greater than zero, the mass on the inclined surface will experience some sort of acceleration. When the mass accelerates, it's no longer in a dynamic equilibrium. So when the mg sine theta component acting on the mass equals to the kinetic friction, the mass will travel down the slope at a constant velocity. However, when it's greater than kinetic friction, the mass will start to accelerate down the slope, gaining velocity over time. A 2 kilogram mass is placed on a surface inclined at an angle 60 degrees above the ground. So we have an inclined surface and the angle here is 60 degrees. We have a mass that weighs about 2 kilograms. Let's first identify all the forces. We have a downward weight force. We have an upward normal force that's perpendicular to the surface. And then finally, we have static friction acting up the slope. It is static friction because the mass remains stationary. So it's in a static equilibrium. What is the magnitude of static friction acting on the mass? Because the mass is stationary, we know the net force acting in the direction of the slope should be equal to zero. When we resolve the weight force, we get mg sine theta acting down the slope and mg cosine theta acting this way. mg sine theta minus the static friction, this will give you a net force of zero. So the static friction is equal to mg sine theta. The mass is two kilograms, g is 9.8, and the angle here is 60 degrees. This gives a value of 16.97 newtons. Okay, let's look at part b. What is the static friction coefficient of the inclined surface? Now recall that frictional force, in this case static friction, 
is related to the normal force in that it equals to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Looking back at the free body diagram, we know that the normal force minus mg cosine theta, so that is this particular component of weight force, is equal to a net force of value of zero. Again, this is because the mass is stationary, it's in equilibrium. By rearranging this equation, we know that normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. We can substitute this equation into this friction formula. So we get the friction equals to the coefficient of friction multiplied by mg cosine theta. The coefficient of friction is equal to the friction, that is F static, divided by mg cosine theta. In the previous question, we found the magnitude of static friction, which is 16.97 newtons, divided by mg, so that is 2 kilograms times by 9.8, cosine 60 degrees. This gives a coefficient of 1.73. A 10 kilogram mass initially at rest begins to move on slope inclined at 30 degrees above the ground. Let's first draw a free body diagram to identify all the force vectors. Angle 30 degrees here. The mass is 10 kilograms. So first of all, we have the weight force going down, mg. And this weight force component can be resolved into its two perpendicular components. This is the same angle as the angle of inclination, so that's 30 degrees, which means this component is equal to mg cosine 30 degrees. This component here equals to mg sine 30 degrees. We also have the normal force extending from the surface and remaining perpendicular to the surface, and we have the kinetic friction acting up the slope. So we know that the normal force minus mg cosine 30 degrees gives a net force of zero. So normal force equals to mg cosine 30 degrees. We also know that in the direction of the slope, mg sine 30 degrees minus the kinetic friction gives you a net force. Now in this instance, the net force is not zero because as you can see, the mass was initially at rest and it begins to move. So there's a change in velocity, which implies that the mass is not in equilibrium. If the mass is not in equilibrium, the net force does not equal to zero. So this value here, whatever it is, it is something greater than zero, which causes the mass to accelerate and gain speed. To move on from this equation, we need to recall that kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. The coefficient is given as 0 0.5 and the normal force is given by mg cosine 30 degrees, which means the net force is equal to mg sine 30 degrees minus 0 0.5 mg cosine 30 degrees. We know the mass and acceleration due to gravity. Mass is 10 kilograms times by 9.8 sine 30 minus 0 0.5 times by 10, times by 9.8, cosine 30 degrees. This gives a net force value of 6.56 newtons down the slope. To calculate acceleration, we need to use Newton's second law. The net force is equal to mass times by acceleration. Acceleration equals to 6.56 divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms. This gives a value of 0 0.656 meters per second squared down the slope. A 1 kilogram mass rests on a flat surface with a static friction coefficient of 0 0.8. The surface can be adjusted such that the angle of inclination can be increased. What is the greatest angle of inclination that will prevent the mass from falling? So in this scenario, we don't know what the angle of inclination is, but we do know for a fact that it will be inclined at some angle. And we know that the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.8. The way we approach this question will be exactly the same. We identify the force vectors, so mg going down, normal force going up, perpendicular surface, and because the mass is stationary, we have static coefficient going up the slope. Again, let's call this angle theta. So when we resolve the weight force into its components, this angle here is also theta, which means this component is mg cosine theta, this component here is mg sine theta.
the normal force minus mg cosine theta gives a net force of zero. Similarly, mg sine theta minus the static friction force also gives a net force zero. This is because the object is in a static equilibrium. It is stationary and it is not moving. The static friction is related to the normal force. It is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by normal force. In this case, this is equal to 0 0.8 times by normal force. And from the first equation, the normal force is also equal to mg cosine theta. This means mg sine theta minus the static friction, which is now equal to 0 0.8 mg cosine theta. This is equal to net force of zero. We can divide both sides by mg, and we'll get sine theta is equal to 0 0.8 times by cosine theta. If we divide both sides by cosine theta, we'll have tangent theta on the left-hand side equal to 0 0.8. Theta equals the tangent inverse of 0 0.8, which gives a value of 38.7 degrees. This is the greatest angle at which the surface can be inclined before the mg sine theta component becomes greater than the static friction. Now, when that happens, the net force over here will no longer be zero because mg sine theta will be greater than the static friction. Now, if you recall the difference between static friction and kinetic friction, when the static friction can no longer balance the other force vector, the mass will start to move and instead of static friction, you will have kinetic friction. Another way you can think about the scenario is that as your angle increases from 38.7 degrees, the value of mg sine theta also increases because larger the angle, larger the value of sine theta. If your mg sine theta increases while your static friction stays the same, you will no longer have a net force of zero. In fact, your net force will become greater than zero which causes the mass to start accelerating. And as it accelerates, it will gain speed and start to move down the slope faster and faster. This concludes the video on forces on the inclined surface with friction.